All right, what up, world? Um, I put this book out, or it was actually published uh, 27th of 2020, and uh, or January 27th of 2020. Um, anyway, I, I wanted to finally, I've been meaning to uh, read it off and put it out there um, in a video format. I wanted to put it out for free, make it a free download, but uh, in order to actually have it in paperback um, for a physical copy, I, you know, I had to have it uh, published in, in some way, and um, a lot of these companies were wanting thousands of dollars just to publish it, so I decided to go through Amazon, and um, I made it as cheap as I could. Um, they force you to have uh, a minimum um, amount for it or whatever to pay for the cost of printing and all this but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and um, instead of reading it off uh, I decided I'm just gonna use the little uh, computer voice or whatever I have it read it um, but uh, anywhere anyway I hope you at least find this um, book entertaining or uh, revealing or um, I hope it at least challenges uh, you to think about the flat earth in a, in a different way. Um, anyway, all right, here we go. Chapter 1 Misinterpreted The Bible says the earth is a ball. False. Nowhere in the Bible does God, the Holy Spirit, or any of the writers make that claim. Though it is a common theme for many people, Christian and worldly, to cherry-pick verses of God's Word in an attempt to back their claims. One of the problems with doing this, is the fact that these scriptures are often taken out of context, to suit the person's desires, while, they completely disregard the text before, and after whatever verse they are using, making a verse easy to misinterpret. One verse from the Bible that is commonly misunderstood is Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 22, and it reads, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grash hoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, KJV. The translated word, circle used in this verse comes from the Hebrew word chug which is defined as the following, circle, circuit, compass, strong. In no way does this translate as sphere, ball, or anything of the kind. This is the only time the word circle can be found in scripture. Furthermore, read the verse again. Now imagine and visualize the description. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, KJV. Simply, God's throne sits on top of us, on the firmament. The word firmament can be found in the books, Genesis, Psalms, Ezekiel, and Daniel. We'll get into that later. Next the verse reads, And the inhabitants thereof are as grash hoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, KJV. As a tent. Heavens as a curtain. How does one visualize a ball from a tent, or curtain? This is just another attempt, by the devil, that old serpent, to discredit God's handiwork. His creation. By the end of this book, you will understand why sun worship, heliocentrism, is just another lie from the devil and the whisperers from his legion to keep humans from knowing the truth. He has created many lies, that even Christians believe in, because, they were told by a teacher, media, etc., that it was true. Three examples of these lies with no evidence to back them are the Big Bang Theory, Evolutionary Theory, Darwinism, and Aliens from Other Planets. I placed aliens in quotation marks because what many people think of as aliens could be a variety of other possibilities. To truly paint the picture, I ask that you come to this topic with fresh eyes, as if reading the biblical text for the first time. We were all lied to about this earth on which we live. No one is exempt. The firmament. According to Young's analytical concordance, 
the word firmament simply translates as expanse, coming from the Hebrew word rekia. The website blueletterbible.org uses the Strong's Concordance and it translates firmament also as expanse from the same word, rekia, different spelling. The root word of rekia or rekia is, reka, raka, a primitive root, to pound the earth, as a sign of passion, by analogy to expand, by hammering, by implication, to overlay, with thin sheets of metal, beat, make broad, spread abroad, forth, over, out into plates, stamp, stretch, strong. So, simply explained, the word firmament can be defined as an expanse, solid, pounded out as sheets of metal, and made with passion. Now with the translation, according to Hebrew in mind, let's now look at the verses of scripture where this word firmament is found. The books this word can be found in are as follows, Genesis, Psalms, Ezekiel, and once in Daniel. We will proceed verse by verse, and in the order as they come according to the books it is contained. Chapter 2 True Discernment The first time firmament is found in the King James Version of the Bible is in the book of Genesis. Chapter 1, verse 6, and it reads, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters, KJV. Now, this can be a very confusing passage when one holds the viewpoint of heliocentrism, and when one does, it hardly makes sense. So, one finds multiple teachings of various people that attempt to explain it away to fit their beliefs. Let's break it down, word for word, and phrase by phrase. According to the Strong's, the Hebrew translation of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 6 reads, And God, Elohim, said, Amar, let there be a firmament, Rekiah, in the midst, Tavek, of the waters, Mayim, and let it divide, Betel, the waters, Mayim, from the waters, Mayim. Now for the fun part. This is where true discernment comes into play. God, I pray you will give us understanding, and clarity of interpreting your word. What do these words mean? In order, the Strong's Concordance defines the verse. Elohim, Elohim, plural of Elohim, gods in the ordinary sense, but specifically used, in the plural thus, especially with the article, of the Supreme God, occasionally applied by way of deference to magistrates, and sometimes as a superlative, angels, exceeding, God, gods, desly, very, great, judges, mighty. Amar, Amar, a primitive root, to say, used with great latitude, answer, appoint, avouch, bid, boast self, call, certify, challenge, charge, at the, give, command, meant, commune, consider, declare, demand, desire, determine, expressly, indeed, intend, name, plainly, promise, publish, report, require, say, speak, against, of, still, suppose, talk, tell, term, that is, think, use, speech, utter, verily, yet, strong. Reiki ya, as we defined earlier, can be summed up as, a solid expanse, beaten as hardened metal, with passion. Continuing. Tavek, Tavek, from an unused root meaning to sever, a bisection, i.e., by implication, the center, among, st, between, half, their dash, where, in, to, middle, mid, night, midst, among, out, of, through, with, in. Mayim, Mayim, dual of a primitive noun, but used in a singular sense, water, figuratively, juice, by euphemism, urine, semen, piss, wasting, water, ing, course, flood, spring. Badal, Badal, a primitive root, to divide, in variation senses literally or figuratively, separate, distinguish, differ, select, etc., make, put, difference, divide, asunder, make, separate, self, asian, sever, out, utterly. Strong. Then Mayim repeats two more times. So, 
it reads, Elohim Amar Reiki Yate Vek Mayim Betel Mayim Mayim. Simply, Genesis, Chapter 1, Verse 6 reads, And God said, Let there be a solid expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. To me, this raises even more questions. We understand one of the waters, and that is the waters here in the earth. Oceans, lakes, and rivers. Even ponds. Though, what are the waters above the solid expanse? The next two verses, 7, and 8, reiterates what is explained in verse 6, but further explains that the solid expanse slash firmament, is heaven. Yet, what is the original word that heaven is translated from, and used here? Verses 7, and 8, according to the King James Version reads, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening, and morning were the second day. KJV The word heaven here translates from the Hebrew word, shamayim, and according to the Young's analytical concordance to the Bible means, heaved up things, but what does the Strong's say? It also says heaven translates from the Hebrew word, shamayim, although, it gives an explanation that reads as follows, shamayim, shamayim, dual of an unused singular shamet, from an unused root meaning to be lofty, the sky, as a loft, the dual perhaps alluding to the visible arch in which the clouds move, as well as to the higher ether where the celestial bodies revolve, air, astrologer, heaven, s. In the explanation we just read, I would like to point out a few things. Some phrases it used were, visible arch, and the higher ether where the celestial bodies revolve. So, who's lying here? I dare not think God's word is. Our worldly scientists claim that these celestial bodies are millions of miles away, and that the earth revolves around them yet here it explains the celestial bodies revolve around earth and have been placed in the solid expanse known as the firmament, or heaven. We will further investigate these celestial bodies later, but now, let us continue our study of the firmament. The third day, verse 9, and 10 go on to say, And God said, Let the waters under heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he sees, and God saw that it was good, KJV. Did we read that correctly? I believe we did. Earth is the dry land brought forth from the waters below the firmament. So why do so many Christians believe that earth is a giant ball, spinning, whilst orbiting the sun, as the sun orbits the center of the Milky Way galaxy, and at the same time, this galaxy is hurtling ever so quickly away from the origin of the Big Bang. Have we ever read anything of such claims in God's Word? Quite the contrary. As a young child, when our minds are thriving to learn, we are told this fallacy as fact, and as we grow, we never think to question it. Indoctrination at its finest, or rather, at its most disastrous. Yes, in some cases, Science seems to prove the Bible's legitimacy, but when it comes to what we have been told about the sun, moon, stars, and earth, our Bible completely contradicts the theory of heliocentrism, or sun worship. The fourth day. Firmament, or heaven is continued to be mentioned in verses 14 through 18, and his word says. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. KJV. As our Bible explains, the lights in the firmament are as it says, lights. If they were anything more, would God's word not say? I would like to point out that no verse in Genesis has spoken of planets ever being created. 
Strange, is it? Are planets a man-made concept? The word planet, s, can be found only once in the King James Version of the Christian Bible. 2 Kings, chapter 23, verse 5. And he put down the idolatrous priests, whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah, and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the host of heaven. KJV The word planets used here is translated from the Hebrew word, Mazaloth which means constellations, Young's analytical concordance to the Bible, and the Strong's definition is the same, Mazala. Blueletterbeable.org reads the definition to Mazala as, Mazala, Mazala, apparently from Nazal in the sense of reigning, a constellation, i.e. zodiacal sign, perhaps as affecting the weather, planet. Then it says compare, Mazara, Mazzara, apparently from Nazar in the sense of distinction, some noted constellation, only in the plural, perhaps collectively, the zodiac, Mazaroth. Then it continues, almost in a complete run around saying, compare Mazala, which we already defined, according to the website, blueletterbeable.org which uses the Strong's Concordance to the Bible. I would also like to point out that I have noticed this site, Strong's Concordance to the Bible, uses the word apparently, quite frequently. So, what did we find? I think it is fair to judge that the word planets used in 2 Kings, Chapter 23, verse 5, is a very poor choice of a word to use as a translation. The concept of planets we have been taught by worldly scientists throughout our lives, and the evidence thereof, cannot be found, nor backed by the Word of God. So, why do we as Christians believe in such a concept? The answer, in my opinion, is simple, yet complicated. To say it plainly, as best I can, we were taught these things as facts at a young age, and as we grew, we never thought to question it, nor did we see that in our Bible, his word supports no such theory of heliocentrism, but what I am doing now, is putting claims of worldly scientists to trial, by way of the judge being the word of God, and so far, it seems that we have all been taught a lie from the great deceiver, that most of humanity is unknowingly worshipping. Matthew Chapter 24, verse 24 says, For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. KJV If you ask me, these so-called scientists at these space agencies are the false Christs, and false prophets the book of Matthew speaks of showing, great signs and wonders, KJV. Also, I believe it is no coincidence that the only time the word planets can be found in the Bible is in a scripture dealing with idolatry, and the worship of Baal, and the luminaries themselves. Moving on. The word firmament is found one more time in Genesis, and I believe the correct translation of the word this time is being used to describe the sky. Genesis, chapter 1, verse 20. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven, KJV. I believe it is speaking of the sky here, because, it says firmament of heaven, the expanse of the sky, is how I interpret that. Though, I am curious to read how another version of the Bible translates these passages we have looked over in Genesis. For this cross-reference, we will use the Christian Standard Bible, Genesis, verses 6 through 8, chapter 1. Then God said, Let there be an expanse between the waters, separating water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above the expanse. And it was so. God called the expanse sky. Evening came and then morning, the second day. CSB then verses 14, and 15. Then God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will serve as signs for seasons and for days and years. 
they will be lights in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth. And it was so. CSB Verse 17, God placed them in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth, CSB. Verse 20, Then God said, Let the water swarm with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky, CSB. What did we notice? Instead of using the words, firmament and heaven, the Christian Standard Bible used expanse and sky. Which could work to some degree, yet firmament doesn't just mean expanse, as we learned earlier. The reason why I believe the sky and firmament are separate comes back to verse 6 and 7 when God describes separating the waters above from the waters below which he later calls seas. What is the water above? I believe, what we know as space, are these waters, but mainstream science claims space is a vacuum. Again, someone is lying, and I know it isn't our Father in Heaven. Chapter 3 Mysterious Splendor after reading the Hebrew meaning to these words, I am convinced that to some degree, there is a barrier between us, and God. Physical, spiritual, or a combination of multiple factors. Hard to say with limited information, but according to the Bible, there is a solid barrier between us, and Him. God never said He made any other place like what we live on, and may I point out that there is a distinct focus on the place in which we live. He made the lights to shine on us. As he explains in verse 16 of Genesis chapter 1, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, he made stars also, KJV. He makes it clear that these lights are for the land called earth. Never does he say that he made any other place like earth for these lights to give light to. The stars are for signs, and seasons. Nowhere in scripture does he say that the stars are other greater lights to shine on other places like earth. Earth is one of a kind. To say otherwise goes against God's word. Though, before we get deeper into the topic of stars, we shall finish the subject of the firmament, in which the stars, sun, and moon reside. Firmament is next found in the book of Psalm. Both in chapter 19, and chapter 150. Chapter 19, verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheath his handiwork, KJV. Firmament again, in this verse translates from the Hebrew word, Rekia. Some people have tried to say that this is just referring to the sky, but I disagree. In this verse, both the words heaven, and firmament are used in the same sentence. The translation of heavens being used here comes from the Hebrew word, Shamayim. In the Young's Analytical Concordance of the Bible, it translates the word Shamayim, as, heaved up things. What is this verse really saying here? My interpretation reads as follows, the heaved up things declare the glory of God, and the solid expanse shows his handiwork. I believe the heaved up things are the stars that have been placed in this solid expanse. Young's literal translation of the Bible reads Psalm, chapter 19, verse 1 as, The heavens are recounting the honor of God, and the work of his hands the expanse is declaring. The word, handiwork used by the King James Version comes from the Hebrew word, ma'aset. Strong's definition of this word reads, ma'aset, ma'aset, from Asa an action, good or bad, generally, a transaction, abstractly, activity, by implication, a product, specifically, a poem, or, generally, property, act, art, bake meat, business, deed, do, ing, labor, thing made, where of making, occupation, thing offered, operation, possession, well, handy dash, needle dash, net, work, ing, Manship, wrought. The reason I interpret this verse the way I do is because of the words used, heavens, firmament, and handiwork, in the King James Version. To me, this verse is talking about the things tied into the firmament, crafted by God, shows his awesome talent, and skill of creating. I also agree with this verse very heavily. It is awe inspiring, on a clear, cool night to gaze into the stars 
and see their mysterious splendor. On a side note, Chief Architect of the Saturn V rocket of the Apollo manned lunar missions, Werner von Braun left this very verse of Psalm chapter 19, verse 1 on his tombstone. Take it for what you will. I just find it peculiar, and interesting. What is he saying here? Could be nothing more than a verse that explains his love of the stars and sky or it could be a hidden message. A deathbed confession, if you will. Psalm, chapter 150, verse 1 exalts, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, KJV. I think clearly here it is speaking of the expanse of his power, rather than speaking of the solid expanse God created with his hands to separate the waters that are above, from the waters that are here on earth, as we call it. Chapter 4 Terrible Crystal To further our study, we go to Ezekiel. The word firmament, or rakia, is found five times. Four mentions in chapter 1, and a single time in the tenth chapter. To better understand the correct meaning of firmament being used in chapter 1 of Ezekiel, I will cite the entire chapter. I personally understand the use of this word firmament being used in chapter 1 as speaking of the expanse of the colorful, radiant light shining from what Ezekiel is witnessing. Though, I also visualize God's throne, also being seen, that sits on top of the solid expanse God created in Genesis. Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chebar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzig, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and, behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance, they had the likeness of a man. And every one had four faces, and every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another, they turned not when they went, they went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, and the face of a lion, on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward, two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward, whither the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of lamps, it went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of beryl, and they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them, and when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went, thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went, and when those stood, these stood, and when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal, stretched forth over their heads above. 
and under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other, every one had two, which covered on this side, and every one had two, which covered on that side, their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host, when they stood, they let down their wings. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads, when they stood, and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. KJV What Ezekiel witnessed here is awesome, and amazing, to say the least. The first verse explains, The heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. The sky is literally opened. This indicates, and reassures to me, that the firmament is a solid structure that can be opened or closed. Same truth is understood when reading Genesis chapter 7, verse 11 when Noah witnesses, the floodgates of the sky, being opened. I do wonder if Ezekiel literally witnessed this phenomenon, or if how the King James Version explains, that he had actual, visions of God, KJV. I can't help but to wonder if some of these accounts in the Bible can be explained away with hallucinogenic, and altered mind state like happenings from some magic mushroom, psilocybin, or something else, but that what they experience, is very real to them, and who can truly say that trippy experiences aren't real, and experiences like those in the Bible. They are very real in a sense that these occurrences happen, but is it all just in the mind? Is the mind more real than what we perceive to be real, or more real than what we describe as reality? That is a topic for an entirely different book and literature, but quite interesting, nonetheless. BlueLetterBeable.org and the Young's Analytical Concordance translates the Hebrew word used here in the place of visions, as mara, appearance, sight, young, and, mara, mara, feminine of mara, a vision, also causatively, a mirror, looking glass, vision, strong. The masculine noun of this word, mara is mara, as it explains. Mara, mara, from ara, a view, the act of seeing, also an appearance, the things seen, whether, real, a shape, especially if handsome, comeliness, often plural the looks, or, mental, a vision, apparently, appearance, wreath as soon as beautiful, lee, countenance, fair, favored, form, goodly, to look, up, on, to, look, eth, pattern, to see, seem, sight, visage, vision. Strong. Whether Ezekiel saw these things with his awakened sight, or in a heavenly vision is up for debate. Though, what we do know, from the chapter that follows, is that in this experience, Ezekiel gets orders from God, and he obeys as if the vision was real. What I find beautiful, is that the heavens are literally opened, and he gets a glimpse of the Most High, upon his throne that sits above the firmament of which separates us, from him. What very quickly comes to my mind, while reading this first chapter of Ezekiel is the Aurora Borealis, that can be seen here on earth. All the colors Ezekiel describes seeing during this vision, makes me wonder if when we see the aurora borealis, are we also seeing remnants of God's throne shining through the firmament? Chapter 5 Spectacle of Luminescent Activity I hope at this point, you are beginning to understand why I believe the heliocentric model, completely, goes against what the Bible teaches. So many passages in the Bible make no sense when you believe in the model of space, that worldly scientists so claim to be true, but if Earth really is the center, and the luminaries circle around the ground here, 
as the Bible explains, then suddenly the light comes on, and the Bible begins to make way more sense. Ezekiel has another vision starting in chapter 8, and through chapter 11 where he again sees the creatures, he witnessed in chapter 1, and now calls the beings, cherubims. He sees God again, also. The last time the word firmament is found in the book of Ezekiel is in this vision. Chapter 10, verse 1 reads, Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne, KJV. I truly wondered as a kid, why is the sky blue, as did many at a young age? What if the blue color we witness is of the firmament, or at least the color that is produced from the sun's energy slash light reflecting from the great expanse? Scientism claims that the colors in our skies are from light particles bouncing off the atmosphere. Replace the word atmosphere with firmament, and be a bing. I have noticed a common theme to the world view, it takes the truth, and masquerades it, normally, in a relatively simple way. Hiding in plain sight. This is just yet another example. In Genesis it explains that the firmament separates the waters above, from the waters below, and we know from observation that all large bodies of water are blue, and green, to some degree. The key variable being light and energy slash frequency. There could be something to that, but the aim of this text is to interpret the Bible, to place oneself in the shoes of one that would be alive in the times of the scripture being transcribed, written out, and recorded. To understand what they understood. The older I get, the more I feel some of the knowledge in the Bible can only be fully extrapolated if you interpret some passages allegorically, at least to learn more from each scripture. More is revealed when different perspectives are used when learning from or examining the Bible. The last time firmament is mentioned in scripture, it is found in the book of Daniel. Chapter 12, verse 3 reads, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever, and ever, KJV. Here, again, my understanding is that the word firmament is used to mean expanse or great expanse. On a sunny day, it's bright, obviously and imagining a desert with no electricity, that we know of, at night with a full moon or a new moon with bright stars, surely would be a spectacle of luminescent activity worthy of anyone's eyes. Chapter 6 Host of Heaven We have touched briefly on a few topics thus far. God's throne, sun, moon, and stars, to name a few. In this chapter, we shall dig deeper into the topic of God's throne. Have we been speaking of his throne when we speak of heaven? According to translation of the word, heaven, when it is used, is always speaking of what is above, and the sky itself, and slash or whatever resides in it, the luminaries, for example. I believe what we as Christians refer to as heaven, is either God's throne, or New Jerusalem. This topic of God's throne may not be too revealing as to the shape, and structure of our reality, though, it may be. Regardless, I feel it is an important topic, nonetheless. I could not find a direct reference to God's throne in the Young's Analytical Concordance of the Bible, but I have found a handful of Bible verses that mention the subject, to a degree. We will review those scriptures here, and then discuss what these passages may be explaining to us concerning the throne of our Creator. To begin, we go to Exodus. Chapter 24, verses 9 through 11, Then went up Moses, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand, also they saw God, and did eat and drink, KJV. Does this passage indicate physicality? Seems as though it does, but what is it really saying, also they saw God, and did eat and drink. Did they eat and drink with God? Because, that would change the entire ball game. Concerning this passage, also, this is captivating, 
and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone. I believe this is referring to the firmament that is above us. Why is the sky blue? Maybe this is the simple, yet complicated explanation given in the Bible. God is above the firmament. The firmament holds the luminaries, which holds his feet. Sapphire stone is blue, and on a clear day, the sky is blue. This passage also says, as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. What this says to me, is that these men were seeing the physical firmament, and sky as God sees it, but there we have a direct correspondence of God's throne, and the sky, or heaven. I am beginning to see where the confusion has been concerning heaven, God's throne, and ultimately, the place where our Father resides. The passage goes on to say, they saw God, and did eat and drink. Further suggesting that this was a real physical experience, and not just a vision like of what Ezekiel explains. Before we read this next verse, I want to remind that when the word heaven is used in the Bible, the translation always refers to the sky, or something up in the sky. 1 Kings 22 19 says, And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. KJV This suggests to me, the thought that the luminaries in the sky could be angelic in nature being the, host of heaven. It is an intriguing thought, but I have yet come across solid biblical evidence that supports it, though, I feel there could be some truth to the idea. To clarify, using the Strong's, the word for heaven used here is the Hebrew word, Shamayim, Shamayim, dual of an unused singular Shamet, from an unused root meaning to be lofty, the sky, as a loft, the dual perhaps alluding to the visible arch in which the clouds move, as well as to the higher ether where the celestial bodies revolve. Some may find these things difficult to discuss, and maybe even taboo, but who do you trust? God's word or man's opinion? We are breaking down the meanings. We are not entertaining mere ideas, though, I may impose occasionally my thoughts on the matter, but ultimately, we are going directly to the source, his word. There are many arguments concerning the Bible, but one that cannot be successfully proven, is that the Bible is not remarkable and fascinating. The Bible contains more truth than any other book in existence. Moving on we find our next verse in Psalm chapter 11, verse 4. The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne is in heaven, his eyes behold, his eyelids try, the children of men, KJV. Again, the word here used for heaven is Shamayim, the sky. Do you see the pattern starting to form? God is literally right above us, and it's beautiful. Psalm, 103, verse 19, The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. KJV. Can you guess what Hebrew word is used for the translation of heavens here? Shamayim. Psalm, 45, verse 6, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, KJV. I mentioned this verse, because, it mentions God's throne. Some verses are more in-depth than others, but I am writing down all references to his throne that I can find. Isaiah, 66. Verse 1, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool, KJV. Interesting to note here, throne in this verse comes from the Hebrew word, kiki, which means, properly, covered, i.e. a throne, as canopied, strong. See why the heliocentric model cannot make any sense according to scripture? Who is telling the truth? Man, who is not capable of perfection or the one creator, our God? Isaiah, 6, verse 1, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, KJV. Daniel, 7, verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool, his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire, KJV. Matthew, 23, verse 22, And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, 
and by him that sitteth thereon, KJV. Heaven here, from the Greek, is Auranos. According to the Strong's definition, the sky. Matthew, 5, verse 34, But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, KJV. The word for heaven, again used, is Auranos. Acts, 7, verse 49, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool, KJV. I understand this is getting repetitious, but it is important for us to understand these meanings, so we are not led astray by false doctrines. Those meanings, of course, are the translated words. Again, heaven here is from the Greek Auranos. Pause for a moment though, if you would. Take a second and attempt to visualize what this verse is describing. I'm not here to tell you what to believe. This book is merely a tool, to help us better understand the true meanings of his word, on the subjects we are discussing, the heliocentric theory or God's word. Hebrews, 8, verse 1, We have such an high priest, who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, KJV. Again, heavens here is Auranos. Revelation 4, verse 1 through 6. After this I looked, and, behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and, behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. KJV the colors of jasper and sardine stone is of a darkish, but bright red. Emerald stones are of a beautiful green. As we know, God's throne is in heaven, the sky. When you look at pictures of the northern lights, or the aurora borealis, what do you see but a beautiful, and remarkable array of green and reddish colors? Furthermore, the scripture said in verse 4, that the elders were clothed in white. What color do we see mostly in stars? White. We also see flickers of other colors from them, but if the aurora borealis is a reflection, or bleed through of the glory of his throne, might it also be possible that the host of heaven, or stars, might also be receiving some of the colors of God's throne, in of which they reside, perhaps, as if what we see as stars are just windows into his glory. My artistic mind paints the idea in a few different ways. The scripture continues to say in verse 6, that, before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, KJV. Is glass not see-through, and transparent? By no means am I saying that I know what the sun, moon, and stars are, for sure, based on either worldly science or the Bible, although, what I am saying is this, we have been lied to on a scale that is incomprehensible, fully. The truth is hidden in plain sight. Sometimes it just takes the light to shine at a certain time, in a specific thought or observance, and in an instant, the truth is revealed. To me, the biblical perspective makes much sense, especially the more I ponder particular passages. We may never fully understand this reality to its completeness, but I believe further study into his word and to the original words used, we can, and will continue to gain much knowledge while we are here. Why else did God give us his word, if not for salvation through Jesus, and understanding of him? Chapter 7 Makena The word star can be found roughly 70 times in our Bible. For this chapter, we are going to emphasize on the verses that give more of a description of what the stars are and focus less on the passages that merely reference the word. Using the Strong's Concordance, I have found four different words for what the English has translated as star. 
two Hebrew words, and two Greek. The first word is kaukab, kaokab, probably from the same as kabaun, in the sense of rolling, or kava, in the sense of blazing, a star, as round or as shining, figuratively, a prince, star, gazer. The second Hebrew word I've found is kima, kima, from the same as kumas, a cluster of stars, i.e. the Pleiades, Pleiades, seven stars. For the third word, comes from Greek, and is aster, as ter, probably from the base of strinia, a star, as strewn over the sky, literally or figuratively, star. The next Greek word is astron, astron, neuter from aster, properly, a constellation, put for a single star, natural or artificial, star. Webster's Dictionary defines the word star as, a natural luminous body visible in the sky especially at night. I felt I needed to add that definition, just to clear things up. It seems the definition for the four words listed above lacked detail. Can we agree that when star is mentioned in the Bible that it is precisely what it means, a luminous sight in the night sky? Though, my argument remains that these definitions do not go into great detail. Sounds like a simple argument, but why does science explain stars as phenomenal natural occurrences when the dictionary is straightforward and calls an apple, an apple, instead of trying to say it is something that no one can prove? We know a star as a light in the night sky, but something tells me there is more to be understood about them, aside from what worldly scientism claims. I believe modern science is wrong in many areas, the topic of stars included. One may argue that, they are scientists, I think they would know, but why does one think that way? No one has collected a sample of a star or has even been close to such a happening. Thus far, examination of the Bible shows the sun, moon, and stars all being different make UPS, and created for different purposes. If the sun were a star, would not the Bible say so? Instead, it is implied that the sun, moon, and stars are all their own. For it says, in Genesis 1,14-18 that And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. KJV What do we learn at first glance of this passage? We learn there is a greater light, sun, lesser light, moon, and stars. Notice they are all mentioned as their own, different from each other, but all lights have been set in the firmament, in the sky, heaven, and in the solid expanse, that is in the sky, separating the waters from above, and those below, here where we reside, earth and the seas. What are the stars according to the Bible? Are they simply just lights in the firmament, or could they also be the host of heaven, or angels? Quite a jump, and speculative, but I know there is something to be extracted from the thought. The concept fascinates me. As it says in 1 Kings, chapter 22, verse 19, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him, KJV. Picture this, the North Star, Polaris being the location of God's throne, and the host of heaven, are the stars that circle around God, being the center. Fascinating thought that could be painted beautifully on a canvas, but hasn't this idea been painted and made into art frequently? I believe the host of heaven and the stars are the same, or at the very least there is something to that thought. Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 19, And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, KJV. This seems to me to be a direct relation between the two concepts. Are the stars slash host of heaven also what we know to be angels? The complete meaning of this next verse escapes me, but I feel it is worth noting. 
After Sisera is killed by jail, in the book of Judges, Deborah and Barak sang a song. Part of the song says, they fought from heaven, the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. What is this song really describing? Judges, Chapter 4, During the Battle, the Lord Himself Intervenes. Verse 15, And the Lord discomfited Sisera, and all his chariots, and all his host, with the edge of the sword before Barak, KJV. The word discomfited is translated from Hamam, Hamam, a primitive root, properly, to put in commotion, by implication, to disturb, drive, destroy, break, consume, crush, destroy, discomfort, trouble, vex, strong. The kicker comes when translating, and all his host. This comes from the word Makana. Strong's definition of Makana reads, Makanet, from Chana, an encampment, of travelers or troops, hence, an army, whether literal, of soldiers, or figurative, of dancers, angels, cattle, locusts, stars, or even sacred courts, army, band, battle, camp, company, drove, host, tents. This find is exciting. Here we have a grouping of host of heaven, angels, and stars all from the same verse. Host of heaven being the used English translation, and angels, and stars being found in the meaning of the Hebrew word Makana, from which the term host of heaven is found in translation. Whether long-time Christian, non-religious, or admittedly atheist, the Bible is a wealth of knowledge just waiting for its readers to decipher, store in memory and for its concepts to be learned and applied, to increase perception and discernment, especially when the goal at hand is to understand, the root of every complication. Life is not always what it seems. Many have heard that previous sentence more times than anyone cares to remember, but it is certainly true. Though, the phrase is incredibly lacking for my tastes, but in all fairness, life is way too complex to be broken down into just one sentence. Know what you believe, and by all means, stand for it, but one cannot forget the most crucial part of this statement, no. Make the foundation strong. Solid. Unmovable, like earth. Protected from dangerous winds. Impenetrable, and held together by an infinite source of life, truth. Chapter 8 Shall not be moved. If one claims earth is a ball, flying through space, and also claims they are Christian, that person is either ignorant, or a liar. Ignorance is not stupidity, it is simply not knowing. The Bible makes it very clear that earth cannot be moved. Psalm chapter 104, verse 5, Who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever, KJV. 1 Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 30, Fear before him, all the earth, the world also shall be stable, that it be not moved, KJV. If it is not obvious yet, the goal of this book, ultimately, is to show the hypocrisy in one's Christian life, at least, the goal is to help identify part of the devil's masquerade, secretly molding entire lives. It has been taught, the end times. What should be more focused upon, is the hell that is being created, in part by one's own decisions, thoughts, and behaviors, along with the fact that much of this hell is completely false, and of no threat to anyone. A visual is that of the man behind the curtain. He was no wizard at all. Just a sad, old, scared human being. The world's lies are much the same. No real photos of space. It is all just Hollywood magic. NASA openly admits they have no real pictures of Earth from space, or any real photo. It is all Photoshop, and they admit it. These lies are so very obvious, but only after one takes a step back, and begins to analyze the fine details of life. Being the reader, whatever belief system one may live out, the Bible is still a gold mine of information and knowledge. It should never be ruled out. Be aware and know truth. I am, that I am, sent me. All right, well.
so there there it is uh, I can't believe all the um, <laughs> all the uh, grammar uh, mess ups like the misspellings and everything um, I went through this so many times to try to try to fix it all um, I guess that's why they recommend you know having other people edit for you but anyway uh, there you go um, I think I'm actually gonna put this on YouTube as well and um, it'll be automatically uh, updated to Odyssey 2 I know I said um, I'm leaving YouTube for good and I am but um, I would be very surprised if this video got flagged like that would be just insane um, but when it comes to you know the real videos I put out um, they will only go on Odyssey or um, yeah you know uh, rumble or any others but right now I'm sticking to Odyssey and we'll see how they we'll see how it goes um, but anyway uh, <laughs> I uh, also noticed that <clears throat> you know in this book it it really is supposed to be just like a, a quick reference type of guide you know I there's so many other verses you can go to um, especially when it comes to um, the earth being on a, a solid foundation and things um, I realized I, I really didn't expound or expand upon um, that too much um, you know because <laughs> you know it looks like you know I just kind of put in two but you know there's so much in there um, and so it's like I think for the most part I I wanted to put together this book for it really to be a, a quick reference tool you know to you know if you're ever having a conversation with your pastor about the flat earth or anything like that that you know you can pull it out and and quickly you know point to certain points um and uh yeah um i don't know like i said i've been meaning to to share it in some type of free format um, but the reason why i do have it on amazon was that you know so i could actually have a, a physical copy you know um but yeah like i said they they i tried to make it as cheap as i possibly could um but you know because of printing cost and everything they they force you to have at least a minimum price on it which i mean makes sense i guess but anyway um thank you for checking that out and uh i hope you you know I'll, I'll try to get all those grammatical errors fixed up and um and get that updated here on Amazon but um, yeah thanks again and uh, if you enjoyed the book please um, you know order, order a copy I'll, I'll put the link in the description um, like I said if I if I could if I could you know print these books for free and get them to people I would but we know you know the world doesn't work like that so I try to make it as uh, as affordable as possible like you know, two energy drinks are like almost six dollars. You know, I think <laughs> I think it's pretty affordable. Anyway, thank you all for checking it out, and I uh, hope you'll have a wonderful day. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, peace.